let's enter more the way to interact with orcas in this presentation called snorkeling with orcas in Norway. But first of all, I want to clear a point. Is the way snorkeling or the orca snorkeling or dolphin snorkeling disturbance for animals? You see in this video two large grey whales swimming and in front of the grey whales there are dolphins. The question is, do you think that the dolphins are disturbing the grey whale swimming? The second question is, do you think that the big whales, they are disturbing the dolphins? And of course, no, they don't disturb each other. This is simply interspecies interaction that happens all the time in the nature. So if this dolphin is not a disturbance for these big whales, how could I be a disturbance? Simply, I don't have this power. I don't swim fast enough. These marine mammals, these cetaceans, if they don't want to interact with a swimmer, they just have to move away. In two seconds, they will be 100 meters away. One person or two or three persons swimming with marine mammals are not disturbances. What can be a disturbance is the boat that drives you in close encounter. It can be even a danger, even a threat to this animal because of the propeller. But when we are in the water, we, snorkeler, we, free divers, we cannot be a disturbance. We don't have this power. When we encounter orcas, we first observe them and Basically, the orcas we find, they can have four main day activities. The first one is traveling. And when they are traveling, uh, we can go in a UC approach. We can use my technique. We can find orcas when they are feeding. When they are feeding, we have to come close very slowly with the boat, but basically, they don't care about the divers. They are just focused on the food. When they are playing, uh, we can come close, but it's a little bit different. We have to be even more careful and stay at the limit of the social zone and then wait what happens. When they are sleeping, we don't interact with orcas. We keep some distance and we wait until they, they wake up and they look for food. When they are traveling, the orcas may be in the full pod. Most of the time, it's the full pod. We can find them traveling with only a sub pod. A part of the pod can be between five and 10 individuals. The second part of the pod, or the other orcas, are swimming maybe 500 meters away, one kilometers away. They are not far. They are still in connection, but we cannot see them. They can swim in a tight pod very close to each other's. Or they can split the pod in two parts and swim some meters away from each other. When they are seeking for prey, they have this organization in a line and they come to the surface to breathe all in the same time and they go down and dive all together. Sometimes, and more and more we have this situation in Norway, they swim spread out, one here and there. In Norway, we have a very typical organization with group swimming and the last one is always an adult male following the group in the last position and we call this guy the pusher. When we try to um, come close to orcas with the boat, uh, we try to find a position in the three-fourth part of the orca pod swimming. And the work of the boat driver will be to come in the same level at the limit of the social zone. We call that the synchronization point. From here, we can have two behavior of the orcas. The first one, if the orcas don't want to interact, they can be, let's say, not interested or they can be busy to look for food. Uh, we're gonna see one thing very typical. The pusher, the last big male, will come a little bit closer to the boat, pretending he wants to interact, but actually when he will be underwater, he will push the rest of the pod away from the boat direction. We call that opening. The orca pod is opening, is opening the angle, so it's going a little bit away from the boat direction. Because we have used a soft approach, we had a soft avoidance. If we use a hard approach, if, for example, we go straight to the, to the orcas, it's gonna be another kind of avoidance. We call that hard avoidance. They will simply break the line with angle. They will change a brutally direction. They will dive all together and they will disappear, and we will not see them again in a day. We just have to find another pod. This is a major disturbance when they are approached very directly and very fast with the boat. This is why we are using the soft approach uh, to respect uh, them and to propose interaction they can accept or not. Sometimes the approach leads to soft encounter. 
For that, the orcas, they tolerate the boat uh, in the same level, which is a good sign. And the work of the boat driver will be to take over keeping the line like this. And we try to reach what we call the drop point, which is three fourths in front of the swimming of orcas. And then it's time for our divers to get ready. Get ready means uh, be fast and efficient, not nervous. Putting your mask, snorkel, fins, camera loaded, everything is ready, waiting for the moment when the boat driver will say you go. If you need help at that moment, you have to ask the person close to you, which is in the best place to help you to put the mask a bit better or the hood on the top of the mask, because you are a couple of seconds away before the boat driver will tell you, go, a clear and distinct go. And you have to react immediately to the boat driver's command, but try to enter the water as softly as you can. Then you are in the water waiting for the orcas. Will you rush in the orca direction? The answer is no, don't do that. It's 100% sure the orca will change direction, dive, and we can forget this spot for the day. This is example of a bad angle uh, and also the behavior with a person swimming as fast as he can to gain some meters, to take the picture of this big male, focus on the food. It's not a big disturbance, but every time you do that, you see the orcas, even if he pretends he doesn't care about you, he will take some distance, swim away from you. And when you think you are gaining one meter, actually you are losing two or three or four meters because he's faster than you. So there is no point to do that. And even the second was even faster. And, and this orca was kept between two swimmers like this. This is situation we should avoid. This is an example of uh, underwater interaction with orca pod traveling. I have a, a pole with a GoPro I can film myself. It was uh, pretty difficult, but I, I could have a good footage. And you can see that in this video, uh, I'm a little bit late and I know that. So instead of rushing in the orca direction, I open my path a little bit and immediately one orca uh, has left the, the, the swimming direction and gave me a level two interaction. Another solution is staying still. This is very good because the orca pod will follow the direction they have before you go in the water. You will see them passing in front of you mainly for a level one interaction. I'm filming in this situation and I know I feel when I'm too late and when there is no point to swim in the orca direction. So I let my buoyancy bring me back to the surface. And by doing that, I give a signal. My body sends a signal, give a message to the orca. And most of the time they stay around. If the divers are in the same behavior, such as in this video, we can be visited by the same orcas once, twice, or maybe more. Because all the divers are staying still, they are visited by the same orcas. This is a very, very good example of what you can get when you stay still with orcas visiting you. The second solution could be swimming in the same direction. For instance, you are here, the orca pod is swimming in this direction. Is it okay to swim in front of the orca pod? Isn't it dangerous in front of the top predator to swim like if you're escaping? No, it's not bad, even better than staying still. For me, this is the best way to see orcas taking over and come back and the orca will interact with you. And depending on the, the behavior, depending on your body language, if you show the belly, if you stay at the side, if you show the back, when you are swimming, you, you, you send different signals. And all of this is my experience of the body language and how to reproduce some element of the body language in order to start to communicate with the body language with orcas, and it works. And sometimes the feeling and the encounter is even stronger, such as in this situation with a large female. And you can observe the body language of this female, which is turning the body and looking in, in one direction like this. And you see the pectoral fin, which is also a sign when the pectoral fins are down like this. And then I can appear and she was just by this body language inviting me for a swim. And uh, that we did and it was a really great feeling. There is another technique uh, I don't recommend, and I never use this technique with, uh, in a normal situation, but with the same orcas I've been uh, interacting in the previous video, which was very friendly, totally trustful. Uh, I use the technique of the free space, and uh, it means that instead of swimming in parallel line and keeping the line with the orca, uh, I swim in the direction where she's coming from. By doing this, it's a little bit cheating because she will not see me anymore. And the first reflex is that this orca will turn in order to check me 
uh, by eyes. So she will come in my direction by doing this. The pectoral fin, uh, who are normally in relaxed position, will be like this. Uh, it's not stress, it's just extreme attention because she wanted to spot me again. And when she see me again and she can interact with me, then you see the pectoral fin going down, which is a sign of, okay, here is the man, I can interact. Uh, this is a kind of dance, it's a kind of game. This has to be um, used only with really friendly orcas. When the orca pod is feeding, there is a technique we use. We try to be in front of the wind, we put the engine on neutral, and we drift until the boat is in the center of action. Then we put people uh, softly in the water, and we stay basically at the surface, and we can enjoy the orcas uh, surrounding the bait ball, and also the orcas stay slapping. I ask my divers to swim away from the bait ball and to be a couple of meters at the edge outside of the bait ball, because we have a better view, a uh, global view of the action. It will take sometimes uh, between 40, 50 minutes, or maybe one hour to the orca to eat the bait ball of herrings. And uh, I have experienced many, many times the orca, uh, orca big male, they come very close to us to pick up a herring. And I've seen inside the eyes of the orca male, and you can see where he's looking. And he will never look at you. He will always be focused on the herring he's uh, targeting. When the orca pod is playing, the technique is to say, outside the social zone and to swim just at the limit of the social zone, way and back, up and down, like this. What happens sometimes is when the orca, they open the game uh, to other species, they will swim with you at the edge of the social zone. And they will swim this way, they will be faster, they will turn back, you keep swimming in a parallel line and way and down, maybe two, three, four, five, ten times like this. And what can happen sometimes, and I've tried it, is when the orcas are taking over, I turn and they do the same, they turn to follow you, meaning that they let you lead the game, and this is the most emotional, powerful interaction feeling you can get with orcas. When you have the feeling to be a part of the group, sometimes they enter in a level three interaction, they speak with you. The feeling you have in a level three interaction with the social game of the orcas has no equivalent. So this is the best way to have the level three encounter and the best encounter ever with orcas. Basically, we don't interact with orcas while they are sleeping. We respect because they want to rest, they need to rest. And so we stay quite close in the public zone and we let the boat drifting, but with the engine off to be uh, more silent. And we calculate the drift uh, of the boat to keep the boat outside the social zone. And we are waiting like this until the orcas, they are uh, moving again. And then we can go in the UC technique, the first one we have been speaking with. I have been contacted a couple of years ago by an organization called Orsinus Orca Mayotte. Here is the video they sent to me. This guy had never been trained in the UC and you can see how he's swimming in a parallel line to the orca pod. It's a great encounter. He did exactly what has to be done and they accepted him. They even slowed down because uh, they wanted to keep him inside the pod. They had opened the social structure to this man and I have to say one thing to this video and to this guy because he got amazing encounter and the gift he got from orcas was just remarkable. If you are swimming at the surface and you see the orcas swimming below you, even sometimes they are swimming upside down and they look at you like this, but if they stay deep, uh, don't dive, because if you do so, they will do so. It means they don't want to interact with you. If you try to free dive, we're gonna lose the pod for the day. We have to wait until the orca pod breathe close to the place you are swimming. This is the moment you can free dive. This is the sign they are okay to interact with you underwater, and it happens maybe 20% of the time. All your experience, all your footage, all your pictures of interaction uh, are helpful. You can contribute and become contributors of our Facebook page called UC Orcs Sans Frontières.
You can ask for being a UC ambassador and it's going to be a great honor for us to include you in our staff of ambassadors. If you organize some events, seminars, workshops, works about the orca behavior or also the uh, how to come close with orcas, we're going to be uh, really happy to take part of it or any other suggestion you may have. Thank you for your attention, everyone. Thank you very much. See you at the next presentation. Bye-bye.